Hey guys, it's Lauren with Discover Double Bass, and today I wanted to show you one of my favorite practice techniques called the rhythm exercise. Now this technique is really great for some of those really tricky, quick passages that you just can't get all the way up to speed or you can't get clean enough. It's my go-to secret weapon when I've been practicing consistently and slowly for a while, but I'm just not getting the results that I want. So let's go ahead and get started and I'll show you how it's done. So we're going to be working with four different rhythms today. There are a lot of different rhythmic variations that you can apply and you can use in this exercise, but I found that these four are just enough for me. They're my favorites and I feel like they really get the job done. So the first thing that you want to do once you've decided what passage you're going to work on is figure out what the goal tempo is for that passage. And then once you get that number, you're going to divide it in half. So for me, I'm going to be working on a passage from the Grand Tango by Piazzolla. And the goal tempo for this specific passage is about 120 for the quarter note. So if I divide that in half, I'm going to start at 60 for the quarter note. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to play it all the way through at 60 for the quarter note, completely straight. <laughs> Once I do that, we're going to apply the very first rhythm. So the first rhythm is just a dotted eighth note followed by a sixteenth note over and over and over again. Here's what that sounds like. And then rhythm number two is the opposite of that, a sixteenth note followed by a dotted eighth note. is a dotted eighth note followed by three sixteenth notes. Da, 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 da. So I played a little bit, uh, I flubbed a little bit towards the end of that, so I think I'm going to do that one again. Rhythm number four is two sixteenth notes followed by two eighth notes. Da 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 da. Let me do that one one more time. just a second for me to sort of settle into and then after I get through all four of those rhythms I play it once more completely straight all the way through at the same tempo and I already feel so much better with just doing that one um, all the way through so then from there what you want to do is now you're gonna bump the tempo up and for me I'm gonna bump it up by 10 so I'm going to go up to 70. And it might be different for you. So if you were going from, say, 40 to uh, 70, I would say that maybe you want to go by 5 each time. So 40, 45, 50, so on and so forth. But just use your discretion. <clears throat> try not to do too many reps. I try not to do more than about nine different tempo levels, but no less than, I would say, five or even six. OK, so now. I'm going to start at 70 and I'm going to do all of that over again, but I'm just going to do it completely straight. This is exactly what I would do in the practice room. So let's talk about why 
this technique is so effective. The first reason is because you're starting at half tempo, so you're doing slow practice, which if you've watched literally any of my videos, you know I am a huge proponent of slow practice. It's incredibly effective. But the main reason that this specific technique is so helpful is because of those rhythms. When you apply the rhythms to the quick passages that you're doing, those awkward shifts that you've got and weird string crossings that you might not be able to clear completely are shifted between um, a little bit farther away rhythmically and a little bit closer, back and forth. And what that does is it kind of helps your body sort of internalize how you need to move when you're going a little bit slower and when you're going quicker. So I'll show you what I mean. Let's say you've got a passage something like this. You've got this weird string crossing right in the middle, right? You can hear that I didn't really do a great job of clearing that middle string. So when I apply that first rhythm, that gives me a split second longer to figure out how I'm going to clear that middle string. And then when the rhythm is flipped and I have to go quicker between the two, that's when I can focus on what I need to do and how to apply what I learned in the first rhythm. And you do that with every single tempo change all the way up to your goal tempo. Now, what I do is I don't do this every single day. It's a little bit time consuming and it's very effective, but I have to be efficient with my practicing. So I might do this two, maybe three times a week. And I find even after just the first time of doing it, my passage just sounds so much better and so much cleaner. But like I said, I'll do it a couple times a week and it's really effective. The other times I'll just do standard slow practice. I hope that this helped. I hope you're able to incorporate this into your own practice routine and you find it as effective as I do. If you would like to learn more or take more lessons with yours truly, please check out my full length bowing course available exclusively on discoverdoublebass.com. And if you have any questions over this topic or anything else, please feel free to leave a comment underneath the video and I will get back to you as soon as I can. See you next time.